Welcome back. Today we will be covering the time value of money, uh, kind of going over practice problems, kind of diving into real world applications of what the time value of money means and how you can apply it. So the previous video, we talked about how to calculate future value, present value, rate, and number of periods. Um, today we're going to be covering all of that um, kind of in a real world setting, um, but also throwing in the PMT or the payment function in, in these calculations as well. Um, and they'll just show real world ways we can, can apply the time value of money to things, whether we're thinking about getting a loan or wanting to know how much we, can, we need to save each month for retirement and things like that. Um, so one thing to note while we go through these five questions, so there are five different terms that you need to know for time value of money. Present value, future value, the rate of return, the PMT or the payment, the N per or number of periods. So there's five possible terms in each problem. You need at least three, n three of those defined. And so in order to solve a time value of money problem, you need at least three out of the five terms defined in order to derive a solution. All right, so let's go with the first question. You invest $100 today, so we go to the bank, put 100 bucks in, all right? Then $50 every month at a rate of return of 10%. So then after that, every month, we're gonna be putting 50 more dollars into that, and we're expecting to get a 10% return rate each month. And so how much money will we have after 30 years? So here we have four of those terms defined. We have the present value, which would be $100. We have the PMT or the payments, which would be $50 a month. So it's important that um, we label these um, because in each problem they could be monthly or annually. You just need to make sure all the terms when calculating are, are set equally to each other. So the rate of return would be 10%. However, we wanna know we need to translate everything monthly, right? So what we're gonna do is take the 10% divided by 12 months in a year to get um, a rate of 0.83% monthly, all right? If I can spell, <laughs> seems to be the biggest problem. All right, and the last thing that we have here is the N per or the number of periods, or we're going for 30 years. But since we want this in months, we'll take 30 years times 12 months in a year to get 360 months. All right, so now what we want to solve here is we wanna know how much money we're gonna have in 30 years. So we wanna know the future value. So we'll go ahead and do a negative future value. Um, we'll go ahead and throw the rate in there, number of periods, the payment, and the present value and we will get $115,008.14. Um, so basically, um, this kind of goes to show how powerful it is. If you're just saving 50 bucks a month for the next 30 years of your life, you're gonna have 100,000, over $100,000 in the bank if you get a rate of return of 10%, all right? So going on to the next question, you want to have $2 million when you retire in 40 years. You determine you can earn 10% each year by putting that money into the stock market. How much money do you need to save per month to reach your goal? All right, so this is basically saying, I want when I retire in 40 years, I want at least 2 million bucks in the bank. Um, how much do I need to save or put into stocks every month if I'm getting a 10% return every month? So we know the future value is $2 million, $2 million we know the N per to be $40, for, or 40 years, um, and we can see that the rate of return is 10%, all right? So it wants this in monthly, remember? Um, so when kind of calculating these problems on your own, you gotta make sure all the units are in the same measurement, right? So if you wanna calculate it annually, make sure they're all annual. If you wanna find monthly, make sure they're all monthly. So um, something we're gonna do is we're gonna change the number of periods monthly. So we'll do 40 times 12, and we'll do the 10% divided by 12 um, to get the monthly rates, all right? All right, so we want to find the 
payments or the PMT, how much we need to spend every month in order to get to $2 million in four years at 10%. So we'll go ahead and do a negative PMT function. We'll find the rate, number of periods, skip the present value, that's, we don't know that, and the future value we want to be $2 million. So if we contribute $316.25 each month over the next 40 years, we will have $2 million saved up when we retire. All right, moving on. So question number three, you want to know how big of a loan you can get from the bank. All right, so you're looking for a loan. You want a 30 year loan and the loan rate is 3%. So you have an interest rate on the loan of 3% for 30 years. So you calculate based on your budget that you can afford to pay $1,500 a month on this, on this loan or this mortgage. So we know we, we know the number of periods to be 30 years. Um, we'll make this monthly. Um, and the loan rate annually is 3%. So we'll go ahead and make that monthly as well. Uh, then we'll go ahead and the last bit of data that we have is we know our payment schedule. So we know that we can spend $1,500 a month. And what we're trying to determine, so we wanna know the present value here. We wanna know in today's dollars, the, the size of the loan that we are able to receive. So we'll do head a negative, we'll go ahead and do a negative PV function, find the rate, number of periods, and the payments. All right, so in today's dollars, if we can spend $1,500 per month at a 30 year fixed rate loan of 3% interest, we can afford a 355,784.7 loan today. All right, good stuff, guys. <laughs> All right, question four. You can take out a loan of 300,000 to buy a house. The loan lasts 30 years and has a 3.5% interest rate. How much will you pay monthly for the loan? So like question, similar to question three, we're just doing the opposite. Instead of finding the present value, we're trying to find uh, the amount of payments this loan would be. So very applicable real world, right? All right, so we know the present value is 300,000. We know the end number of periods is um, 30 years. We know the rate is 3.5%. All right, and we're trying to determine the PMT or the payments. So how much monthly will we have to do? So we're trying to figure out the payments. We'll do a negative PMT function um, so you'll notice that I didn't convert these into months quite yet. Um, so you can do that in the individual cells or in the formula. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in the formula mixed up a little bit. So we'll do divided by 12, number of periods times 12, and then the present value. So we will need to pay $1,347.13 um, each month in order to pay off this loan over 30 years. All right, question number five. Last one here. Thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully uh, you're learning something. So when you retire, you want to be able to spend $3,000 each month. <laughs> it's kind of a small retirement. I want to kind of go a little bit bigger when I retire, but uh, you plan on being retired for 20 years. So $3,000 a month for 20 years. When you're retired, you assume you can get a 6% annual return. So you're gonna retire with this set of money. So it wants to know how much money do you need the day you retire. And so once you have that sum of money, you're gonna be collecting 6% annually after you retire for the next 20 years. All right, so we know our PMT, we want to be 3,000. Our N per, we'll go ahead and convert this as well. is 20 years, turn it into months. Um, and then we know the rate, which is 6%. Turn that into months as well. Go ahead and format this. All right. So how much money do you need the day you retire? So this will be a 
A lot of people will think this is a future values um, statement, but it is actually a present value because you want to know in today's dollars, right now, how much money you need to retire, not how much money it is in the future. So we'll do go ahead and do a negative PV function. We'll do the rate, number of periods, and the payment. So $418,742 is the amount we need to have in the bank when we retire if we're getting 6% off of it once we're retired and we want to spend $3,000 each month till we die in 20 years. All right, guys. So that's just a quick rundown of real-world applications for time value of money solutions, kind of dealing with loans and um, retirement options and things like that. So hopefully this was really simple and straightforward. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about how Excel can really be a powerful tool in calculating this. Um, thanks, guys. Go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, uh, and I appreciate it. Have a good one.